So Michelle Obama's new podcast just dropped. Why is this important? Well, it might just seem like just another conversation podcast, but it's actually low key revolutionary in the very short history of first ladies of the United States of America. To better understand this, we should kind of start from the very beginning, because if we're really honest with ourselves, the role of first lady was never really prepared for a smart or ambitious woman. If you search the US Constitution, first lady doesn't appear. The framers couldn't really envision a role for the president's wife within the government. They were kind of making this up as they go along. Okay. But the modern office of the First Lady has a budget of upwards of a million dollars and a staff of anywhere around 20 people. Going from a non-existent position to having a staff, press releases, initiatives, really highlights the ambiguity in this unelected position. It's like, does she have political power? Is she a political entity? Can she help out in policy? And if so, by how much? This lack of definition means every first lady has had to define the role for herself, which means generally looking backwards. As Perry Giles and Blair note, the women who held this position helped frame the role, yet were themselves simultaneously influenced by the gender ideologies that prescribed their enactments of this highly gendered position. The women themselves were limited by whatever cultural or gender norms existed at their time. Also, in the wonderfully titled First Lady But Second Fiddle, the author notes, both mirrors and models of American womanhood, they have contributed to the elevation of women's status in society. Uh, and I would argue that it's not just the elevation, but the fight for women's status in society. And to be honest, the rigid gender norms and lack of clarity doesn't magically evaporate after she leaves the White House. Even if we exclude really early first ladies, you know, who didn't really have a lot of the political, economic, or um, cultural power to have a voice outside of their husbands, modern former first ladies haven't really rocked the boat. Sure, they write books through the lens of their world leader husbands, but a woman is more than her relationship with her husband, right? 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 Right. <laughs> Even as former first ladies have tried to move beyond these boundaries, they've faced a lot of pushback from American society. And I'm sure Hillary Clinton comes to mind with all this, but we're gonna pause and instead go to Eleanor Roosevelt. The Roosevelts were called the first couple and complemented each other perfectly for his presidency. While Franklin was confined to a wheelchair from polio, Eleanor traveled the country and brought back valuable information for him. But she didn't just travel for him. She traveled to push forward a progressive agenda that she continued long after he passed away. She was heavily involved in the United Nations and President Kennedy even sent her as part of a prisoner exchange delegation after the failed Bay of Pigs invasion. What? However, Eleanor got so much abuse for all her work. She was called a whole list of terrible names. And even though she was a tireless worker for so many noble causes, Eleanor was seen as an outlier of what was desired in a woman at the time. Even as World War II had really changed what was possible for women to do, we all know that Hollywood and other aspects of American culture didn't champion female activists like her. Okay, now we're gonna talk about Hillary Clinton. Just to think about her post Bill Clinton's presidency, Hillary Clinton is a political beast like no other first lady before her. No other first lady has run for the Senate and run for the presidency, period, full stop. And even if she ultimately wasn't successful in her highest goal of the presidency, her candidacy signals the innate contradiction of modern womanhood. You can be anything except ambitious. I know we have still not shattered that highest and hardest glass ceiling. And that's why Michelle's podcast is so revolutionary. Like no one else has done this. Which first families have created production companies? How many first ladies have podcasts? She's not redefining her husband's legacy. She's making something entirely her own about relationships. Sure, Barack is on the first episode, but they talk as a couple rather than as a political entity. And she's doing it at a time when awareness of diversity in media is coming to a head. She is one of the few powerful women making business decisions in the entertainment industry, an industry where women make up only 18% of studio heads. This is a new frontier. Michelle is not only pushing the boundaries of what it means to be a former first lady, but she's also redefining what it means to be a smart, ambitious, and powerful woman in America right now. 
I'm really disappointed at how this podcast is being covered. There's a beautiful untold story here about how Michelle is inspiring future generations and future first ladies to flip the narrative, not being defined by who came before them, but aiming higher. And I think what this looks like is really only limited by imagination. Do first ladies have a voice outside of their husbands? What does that look like moving forward? And specifically, what would it look like moving forward if a first man comes into the White House? No matter what comes next, the role of first lady is going to look radically different than what came before.